Hello, welcome to News Points on Memories TV. My name is Ofonisa Basibasi. A community is said to be at peace when you have both indigenous and non indigenous peacefully coexisting. And Akwaibum State is that state that is known for its hospitability and its peaceful nature. For non indigenous to move in and establish businesses that have been of benefit to the people of Akwaibum State. So today in the studio with me, is the president general Ibo community on Hanez and Dibo Akwaibom State chapter Elder Sunday Uvie? He will tell us more about the peaceful coexistence of Akwaibom people and the Ibo people in the Akwaibom State community. Please don't go away, we'll be right back after the short break. Memories TV Show, your social diary with loads of colorful events for your delight. We bring you step-by-step -step account of ceremonies, gigs, and social functions in and out of season. Memories TV Show, educating, entertaining, and mind-blowing. Watch on demand 247 at www.memoriestv.com.ng. For advert placement or participation, call 080-3307-9639 or... 080-6342-1183. Welcome back from the short break. Like I said before, we have in the house the general, president general of Igbo community, Ohaneze Ndibo, Akwaibom State Chapter, Elder Sunday Uvie, also known as Ugo Paka. You're welcome to the show, sir. Thank you, my sister. All right. So um, today we have some questions for you. And without taking so much of your time, let's go straight to the question, sir. So, how is the Igbo community thriving in a Kwaibom state? Yeah, um, as you can know that Igbos will survive any place we go. Um, we are business-minded people. We are conscious of our business. We are business-oriented. And uh, a Kwaibom is a land where you know people are just like Igbos also. Uh, we don't have much difference between the Igbos and the Kwebomites. Somebody like me, I'm from Abia State. So uh, I think the place is a nice place to be. Okay. So how do you cope with uh, the culture, the taboos, given that you're not from, from this ethnic group? Well, uh, I think, uh, I guess you're from here, and you know that uh, Kwebomites have a very close, you know, uh, cultural system with uh, the Igbos. Um, most things we do is what they also do. So we don't find it difficult to cope. Like uh, two years ago, when I came into office, nearly I did what we call Igbo Cultural Day. And uh, it was fantastic. The Akwebo Mice was there. The, the, the Paraman ruler was invited. And uh, the villagers were there, the villagers of Uyo was yeah. there. And um, so many, the local government chairman was there because we are just brothers. And they, they enjoy, in fact, sometimes they enjoy our culture more than even we that own the culture. All right, talking about um, the Igbo cultural day. You know, in some other states, when we talk about the Igbo day, People come to a standstill to watch. It's always a grand event, but um, I don't think we have much of that here in Akwaibom. What could be the reason? Yes. Um, to be frank, indeed, uh, there's a little, little, little issues that made it that way. And uh, that's why, by God's grace, we are seeking the face of God so that that unity, that cordial relationship will come back. Because when you hear Igbo Day, you will actually know that the state will shake a bit because everywhere will be locked down. You will begin to imagine, is it actually them that own the state because of our, our, you know, our level of commitment in business? Yes. And uh, by special grace of God, we are coming up with a great man of God in the land that God has sent for a, a purpose like this, when you find things difficult, when things are not working. And uh, in the person of uh, Reverend Dr. Umubai, he's having a strong event with us. All the entire Igbos are coming together in Akwaibom State. Entire Igbos in Akwaibom State across that one local government. They are coming to now embrace each other and seek the face of God under the umbrella of Reverend Dr. Umubai. Adam, the host. 
by grace of God that is coming up on fourth of next month, March. Okay, sir. So, do the Igbos living here in Akwaibom face any form of ethnic discrimination? Um, to be frank with you, I don't think we have something like that because one, the thing we eat is what the Akwaibom mice eat. When you go to Igbo joint, you discover Akwaibom mice are also in that joint. When you go to Akwaibom mice joint, you also discover the Igbos are there. So we we don't have problem. Oh. Yes, actually we don't have problem. Okay, but is is there any major challenge that the Igbos are facing in the state? Yes, the major challenge we are facing um, is the recognition. The recognition is not all that there. The government of the day are not giving the Igbos the level of recognition we expect to have. For instance. There are people that did not even give the support during the election. In fact, they declare support of another party openly. But the entire Igbos, the Igbo community, I was on air 24 hours speaking, telling my people. In fact, I, I told them, if you don't play PDP, you are going to pay a fine of 10,000 naira. Hmm. It was on air. And uh, we started supporting the government of the day, right from when the His Excellency was SSG in the state. We begin to push our support. Until today, we are still giving him support. But the recognition is not all that there. So uh, are yeah, you saying that the Igbos actually have influence on the politics of the day? Yes, of course, because uh, we, we, we have number in our Bible, and you know that. <laughs> And I also talk about the non-indigenous. We have numbers. You know, I, I think I didn't tell you. I'm the president general of non-indigenous mm -hmm. Aquaibom State. Wow. So we have a lot to contribute. We cast our vote. We go for campaign. That's beautiful. Yeah. So do you hope to have a representative in the state house someday? Yes, of course. Because in Kano we have it. Oh. In Plateau we have it. In Lagos we have it. And so many other places. And I know one day, God will touch the heart of the indigenous to even ask us for it. I think Udom has tried for one thing, has given us uh, to a non-indigenous, mm -hmm. which is the first time in the world. <laughs> Let me also comment him on that. But we are still expecting more. We believe that we need as a non-indigenous, very important, somebody who can represent the non-indigenous. Okay. Yes. So what are the future plans of Igbo community? Yes, we have a lot of plans. As you know, we are developers. We don't come to states and uh, we start discriminating. Ah, this is not our land. We make money and take it our land, unlike other tribes. When we make money in the land, we invest in the land. You can see everywhere we are building houses. Yes, we are like that. You go to a water housing, you see boys building houses there. As the non indigenous are building, the indigenous are building. Are you getting me? Not when the indigenous are building, you are not just trying to remain as a tenant. That means you have even intention. You can one day commit crime and leave the city. But as long as you have investment in that land, you are going nowhere. When I was discussing with Excellency, when you know, the time he lost his daddy, he said there is nothing different between the Igbos and the Aquaibomites. Mm. He certainly said it. He said, wherever we are, we should take it as our home. That nobody should come and tell us that we are not in, we are not part and parcel of the, you know, the indigenous. And that's why I love him so much. I, in fact, I believe in him so much. Mm. And I believe there's nothing, there's no way you can see him today and he said there's difference between him and Igbo man. So do the Igbos have any specific rules or body of rules and regulation governing them while they are staying here in the state? Not just the state. But uh, let me start with the state. The Igbos, the way we operate, we operate like the Jews. We have a platform that we operate that as I'm sitting here, I know what is happening among the Igbos in Lagos. I know what is happening in Kano. I can quickly call the leader of the Igbo community in Kano and ask him what is going on. And they will pass information to me. And he can also call me. We relate 
That's why we have what they call Ohaneze Ndibo. And in every state you see them. As I'm sitting here, if I want to have information about what is happening to the Igbos in Ekorebene town, I will call the leader of Igbo community in Ekorebene. What is happening? I was told that one of our sons do this or do it. He said, no, 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 it's wrong information. I'm there already. We can understand the way we operate. And that's why we advise that the moment you enter to the city, go and look for your brothers, register to become a member of that body. And there's one thing Igbo does that is not common. Whether you're a member or not, if anything seriously happened to any Igbo man, we call it Onyaga Nawanea, means don't leave your brother. We must immediately react to make sure we save him first before we now ask, are you a member or not? But we must first of all rescue you. And that's why we say, Ibo said, Onya Agana Wanaya means let nobody leave his brother. And uh, you see, that is one of the things that is actually helping us. Whether you are from Abia, you are from Imo, you are from Eboin, wherever you come, as long as it's within the five, six states of the Ibo land. We believe that we are one blood. So first of all, we save you. We have government of our own. In Igbo land, it is the same thing. In our families, the same thing. We have that kind of way to coordinate ourselves with that government coming in. By right, the Igbos don't supposed to call police. You don't bring police to your brother. You don't take your brother to court. Most of the cases, we preside on our own. Like I said, I'm the leader. I have other leaders, chapter leaders. If this leader you are not comfortable with, you can take it to the other leader. Let him look into your matter. If you finish looking and you are not comfortable, you can take it to the other one. He will look into the matter. Before you know it, they will settle. And today, thank God, some matters from police station, they will say, okay, since your leader is here, take it to him. If it's between the two Igbos, and they will bring it to my own kingdom, and I will preside over the matter, and they will all go home. Happily. Mm, all right. So talking about Igbo, we all know that the Igbos are really, really business inclined. So how is the business terrain here in Akwa Ibo? Yeah, we're trying. Even our women, everybody, all hands on desk. We're all trying to make sure, you know, the Akwa Ibo, you see, uh, you know very well that it's not actually business state. It's a, a place that government workers are more. But they also, the indigenous are also trying. In fact, that is the only state that is competing with the Igbos in business. They are quite bombers. In other states, you can't see pharmacy and you start asking who owns it. You, you have already draw a conclusion that it's, it's Igbo. You can't go to buy spare parts and you begin to see another tribe. You conclude that it's Igbos. But here it's not like that. Aqua bombers are there. They are also hitting to make sure they also do something that we are doing. So the competition here is balanced. The indigenous are doing and we're also doing. Okay. Um, the present government has moved for industrialization in the state. How is that affecting the Igbo community? Yes, the Igbos are one of the people that actually said support His Excellency Udom Emmanuel because he's a banker and he has that belief, we have that belief that as a banker, he's going to support business people. Because we believe in business. We are not good in politics. And uh, at the end of the day, we are still pressing that he make more effort for the industrialization. Because actually, we must speak the truth. We need more effort for industrialization. Okay. Yes, because that is, I can remember vividly how many times I was using it as a campaign when I was speaking on his behalf. Hmm. Right from when he was SSG. I'm, I'm telling you the gospel truth. Mm -hmm. I was able to convince that not because you know the outgoing uh, governor is uh, my in-law. No, no, no. I'm saying it because I know that this man he is a banker. An average banker understands the business. And today, we are still believing that he will surely move more strength in industrialization. 
so that we can also enjoy both the indigenous and the non-indigenous. That's beautiful, yes. sir. So how has the relationship between the Igbo and the host community been? As I rightly said, with the Igbos cannot do without the host community. There is no way we can cope without them. They are our strength. They sell land to us. They rent house to us. They rent shops to us. So uh, anybody that said they are not trying, that means that person is looking for trouble. <laughs> the, the, the indigenous are really, really, really accommodating us very well. But I'm talking even on, on behalf of the entire non-indigenous Aquarium state. There was a land allocated to the Igbos many, many years ago. And uh, as I'm talking to it, this is the only state the Igbos have no hall. Oh. This is the only state Igbo have no street. I, I'm assured I, I came from the north. All my life was north. My next town is Aquaibo. And when I'm coming down, I said I'm going back to my land. And I believe I, I took it as my land. So if the state government can at least allocate that same land that allocated to us many years ago back, I get me, so that the Igbos have, will have that benefit that there was a land allocated to the Igbos to build their town hall where we meet. I can imagine the, the Igbos in Aquaibom State are having their meeting in primary school. Are you getting me? Mm. Even His Excellency will not be happy to visit us in primary school. As I am talking to you now, I don't have office of my own as a leader of Igbo community, as a leader of non-indigenous. During His, uh, His Excellency goes to but he promised the non-indigenous to give us secretariat and do secretariat and so many things like that. And the, the, because we, we had you know, a kind of a rally we did for him, 10,000 non-indigenous rally. And he came and saw, and that promise was made. So even if a new government is coming, it's inheriting the debt of the former government. That means the state government is owing the non-indigenous. So I am appealing to His Excellency that please reallocate land to the non-indigenous, reallocate the land they took from the Igbos, so that we can have our permanent meeting place okay. so that when you want to visit us you know where to come and see your people because I believe we are your people and God will bless you as we do that alright so um, is there any other thing that you want the government uh, to do for the Igbos to first or strengthen the relationship that has existed between um, the Igbo people and the host community yes I mean, most times you see me talking when they interview me from a business, uh, social newspaper, international body, and uh, mm -hmm. I, there's something I said there. I said they are not overtaxing us. That the state government, the government of day is not overtaxing us. But I discovered this time around that that has started happening. Even when we are coming out from COVID-19 and the NSAS, things are tough. But you discover that local government, like it, local government, mm -hmm. they are giving us much, a lot of people have come to report to me that the tax they are giving them the revenue they are giving them is too exorbitant. I get them, it's too high. Why? Why even now? And they are taking so many of us to court. So he says, I should look into it. So that they, and because I know he says, I cannot be aware of this kind of thing. Okay. Yes. Um, please, um, before we go, please, a word to, the, uh, to your viewers concerning business. What advice will you give someone that wants to go into business? We know you're a successful businessman, and anybody that stays in Uyo, and even a Kwaibom said, we will know Ugo Paka. Sure. So, um, what advice do you have for people that want to go into business? Sir? Yes. One, I want the youth of a Kwaibom minds. An album advised me as my in-law, the Commissioner of Information. He said, Ugo, you are a nice man, and uh, the youth of a Kwaibom believe in you. Advice and see how you can encourage them. And I told him I would do that. And I've started right from my church teaching the youths how the Aquabomites youth should be in you know should be committed. It's not good to roam around. Sometimes they say hey, they are doing morning ritual. We don't do any morning ritual. It's just that we are committed to our business. There's nothing that like good as good as commitment. When you are committed to something the thing will surely boom. Are you getting me? So when you are not committed to what you are doing, it can boom. 
and I'm picking some of them to, you know, to stay with me. My PA is a quite bomb guy. One of my secretaries is a quite bomb. To make sure they are close to me, let them sit, sit under my teaching on how we make it in life. That is not magic. It's all about commitment. Don't everybody cannot be a politician. Definitely. Because I discover in this state, everybody wants to be an honorable. Honorable what? Be committed to something. Get something doing. Do you know you can start business with 50,000 naira? And in the next five years, you can become a millionaire with 50,000 naira. People like us, we start with 500 naira. Yeah. Some years ago. And I have to forget about who is my father, who is my uncle, and I begin to think about who I am should be. My children can never call my house their house, what they say, daddy's house. Because they knew that that house don't belong to them. It's between me and my wife. <laughs> Two of us owns the property. So you don't come and claim the house that don't belong to you. Go and fight and get your own. You can't say my car, our car. No. This is my car and my wife's car. We level for it. You go and fight for your own. So the problem I discover is that many of them depend on their father's property, their mother's property. And when you have ventured into looking at your parents' property, you can't level for your own. They work hard to make it. And you need to work hard and make it. Check our you know, spiritual father, Reverend Otomo Bai. He makes sure everybody go and work for yourself. That you are my son doesn't mean I should work for you. Go and work for yourself. So that if I'm not there, you can be able to protect what I have been able to level for. Otherwise, you sell them off. People sell their parents' property. Some even praying for their father to die. I ask you, well, my boy, what are you doing that you are blaming your father? At age of 35 years, he complaining my father didn't do for me. That's foolishness. Average young man from Igbo land believed that at the age of 25 years, he should be able to hold something. If you are schooling, fine and good. At age of 28, you should be able to hold something. You don't be talking about Papa. I, I, you know my father have died. And you know I don't have mother. At what age? 30 years you are talking about mother. <laughs> I say sorry to that kind of people. At age of 24, I'm already married. Even when I started business with 500 naira. It depends on your commitment. You don't need to steal. You don't need to do front, front land, you know, art for you to succeed. So that's it. All right. So thank you so much. So it was so nice having you on the show. That's how far we can go on the show today. Please, for more updates, do not forget to log on to our website, www.memoriestv.com.ng. You can also like and subscribe to this channel. Please do not forget to follow us also on Facebook. Facebook slash Memories TV show. I remain Ofoni Sebasibasi, your favorite anchor. And for me, is bye bye. <laughs>